so in this video i'll try to solve this buffer overflow prep room of try hack me let me connect to it over vpn i have ssh into my kali machine connecting to vpn Let me start a machine. This takes a minute. I will put the IP here to RDP into the machine that try hack me will provide. This is just to I'm just trying to verify the tool once again. This part you can ignore. Okay, so this is the IP of the machine. So now we are into the Windows machine, our target machine. First of all, we'll run Emanuel Debugger as root. Then we'll open the oscp.exe file. Let's see if we can connect to this IP. Let's try netcat to connect to this vulnerable server. The IP is 10.10.101.1.1. Yes, we are able to connect to it. Let me increase this font size. Okay. Let us set the working directory in immunity then 
we can set it to anyone so let us try to fuzz overflow dot one command overflow one command because that is probably vulnerable we'll use the gopher command to fuzz it use minus i to pass the ip of the machine which is 10.10.101.55 i guess yes then pass the port number which is 1337 pass the command which is overflow one then space i think they should do okay so this crashed at 2001 bytes so now let's try to find the address of the EIP because we need to control the EIP so here in try hack me they will say to use pattern create find MSP pattern offset and many such things but we will escape all of it using this tool that I have created called Gopher. Let us try to rerun it. So our goal is to find the offset. For that we'll use the command offset pass the IP is 10.10.101.50 then the port 1337 and the command overflow 1 then the length at which it is it has crashed that is 2100 okay so it is asking us to enter the EIP value that we observe in the immunity debugger when it has crashed so it uh, I see that it hasn't crashed, so let me see what happened. Let me try to run it again. Okay, so it is running. Mm, it has still not crashed. So let's try to pass a bigger value, bigger length. It has passed 2200 maybe. It is saying that it has timed out. Uh, I'm not sure why this is happening. We try to run it and try to connect to it using netcat maybe. Yeah, we are able to connect. Maybe we, oh, we were passing the IP wrong. So 2100 is fine because that is the value that we got that at which it has crashed. So this is the wrong part that we were doing. It is I wrote it 50 but it is 55. Now let's try. It should have crashed. Yeah, it has crashed. Let's pass the value of EIP. So it says that starting address of EIP is 1978. Okay. We have we are now able to access EIP. Now let's try to find, let's try to write something to the EIP just to make sure that we can we'll use the send command 10.10.101.55. The port is 1337. Command that we are testing is overflow one then I'll pass the A address for the address of the EIP which is 1978 then let me pass EIP value as maybe um, maybe 0 1 0 2 0 3 then 0 4 okay and then we can also pass some value to the ESP as well. Let me try to pass it 41, 
in ESP. Let's check. So EIP value is 01020304 as we expected in the reverse order because we it follows little Indian pattern. And then ESP, let's try to follow it. And you can see that it has ABCD value, which is a actually 41424344. Let's try to see it in dump ESP. Right click and then click on follow and dump. And you can see 41424344 has been inserted in hex dump. Let me try to increase the size if possible. Yeah, now I guess you can see 41424344 in the ESP. So I guess it is fine. So now let me try to find. Uh, let's check for the modules which might which might not have the security value set we'll do mona modules to find all those vulnerable modules you can see these are the modules that are present and which one has all of it false i guess the third one has all of it false which is ESSFunk.dll. So we'll try to check an instruction which contains, uh, we'll try to find jump ESP instruction in this module. For that, we'll do Muna JMP in the register. Sorry, jump is called JMP in the register ESP in the module. Uh, ESS func dot dll because that doesn't have any security enabled. Okay, so let's try to find. So there are total nine pointers there. I guess this value that's try to use this one which is 6251 this one yeah so this is the value so let us try to add this instruction in the EIP to see that we are able to reach that point or not I will pass this address in EIP we'll have to write it in reverse order that is AF that one then one one AF then one one then five zero then six two let me see if i can pass that i need to rerun the program once again Let me set a breakpoint here to see that if we were able to reach this point or not. Oh, sorry. First, I have to run it, then then pass the breakpoint. the first one here let me set a breakpoint we have set the breakpoint it is running now let's run the payload once again to see if we are able to reach this point or not yeah so in EIP there is in light blue you can see that we were able to reach this point so now the idea is to generate a shell code and have it running let me run netcat in this place what is the ip it is 108 okay let me run a listener at 4444 four, four, four. 
Okay. Let me create a payload using MSF Venom. So you can pipe it to any output. Maybe let me tell temp shellcode.txt, whatever it is. Now let me explain the code. P is for payload, L host is for the IP of the machine in which you want to get the reverse shell. In this case, it is 108. Port is this, exit funk is to stabilize the code, B is to get rid of the uh, bad characters. Sorry, we missed this step, but I'm sure that this doesn't have any um, bad characters. Let's see if this shell code doesn't work, then we'll maybe try to check for the bad characters. It is taking some time. Let me see if it is possible on installing it on Mac. I seem to have issues with internet, I guess. Let me see if it is running fine. Yeah, it is. I don't know why Brew is not working. Hmm. Let me see if instead of piping it works. The last command, last flag f hex is like format I want to be hex. Okay, so this is not here. Not sure if MSF console can be installed. So I guess there was some database creation going on. Maybe we need to increase the time of the instance in TryHackMe. Let me see if that is required. Okay, so I guess the shell code is here. Mm. 
let me copy this shell code now we have to pass it in the ESP okay so let's run it I hope we'll get a reverse shell now if not we'll check for the bad characters because we skipped that step by mistake let me run it Hmm, it didn't work. So another reason why it might not work may be that uh, we need to add some knob sleds at the beginning of this uh, shell code. Knob sled is just to pass this execution forward. Knob means no no operation codes, so that even if it falls anywhere in the knob sled part, it will reach our shell code properly let us prepend a few knob slits to this uh, shell code you can do 90 is the hex code for that 90 add a few 90 okay added a few 90s there let us try it try running it now even if now it doesn't work then maybe we'll need to check for the bad characters to make sure that there are certain bad characters that needs to be removed but because now we are just removing 00, zero which is a definitely uh, bad characters but there might be more which we didn't check this can be a good way to actually run the shellcode first and then it, if it doesn't work then check for bad characters Hmm, okay, so this also didn't work. Now I think we need to check for bad characters. In order to check for the bad characters, you need to pass all of the characters possible in the place of ESP. All hex has them. Let me copy them. Okay, copied. And let me pass it in the form of in ESP there is some issue here I'm not able to click it what might be happening Let me try to pass it as shell code first. Let's run it. We have, let me copy all of it, all of the hex that are possible, then we'll pass it in ESP just to see if there are any values that are bad. There is a meaning why it is called bad because those characters are specific to be used in certain way in the context of this program, so they are bad for creating our shell code okay, I'm 
not sure why this is happening. Whenever it reaches this place, the system kind of hangs. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, so I guess it is running. Let me pass it directly here. Let's do it the boring way. No patience, man. Okay, I guess now we are good. I will send this one. Okay, sent all of the values in hex. Now we'll try to match it. Let's go to the ESP to find if there are any bad characters. So I see, I guess 7 is a bad character, 7 and 8 both. So we can do this using Mona as well. Let's see if we were able to create. Okay. So we need to create a byte array first for that for comparing Muna byte array where do you want to save it? I want to save it in Okay, so it says that it is uh, saved in OSCP folder. Let's see if it is there. There is a Mona directory created in OSCP. Then there is bin. Okay, I guess we are good. Let's try to compare it now. We'll need the address of ESP. We'll have to do Mona compare. We'll compare the contents of this file that we generated using with the register. Pass the path of the file. With now with the address, we can write it the way it is there in the ESP. That's fine. Which is zero one. Seven seven FA three zero. Okay, so there are multiple bad characters that we should have got rid of zero 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 seven zero eight and many are there. Those need to be avoided while creating the shell code. So let us remove all of them, take note of all of them. 00 then 07. 
then 0 8 then 2 e then 2 f then a 0 then a 1 okay till that time let's restart our server Yeah, so shell code is generated. Let us copy it. Now I use this shell code. Instead of the previous one because that didn't respect the bad characters because we didn't do this step earlier on which was required I just forgot that let me paste this new shell code let's prepend a few knobs slid Let us run a listener on this one. I hope this will run this time. Mm, didn't still work. I am not sure why that might be the case because we took care of the bad characters anyway. Let me try to remove ESP to see if I'm able to hit the. Let's try to maybe append a few more knob slats. many more knob slits have added now let's is the server running yeah it is mm, still it didn't work to debug why that is happening let me try this step once again Let me try a new terminal, I'm facing some issues in it. session so I guess we can get to it fast yeah we got here fast hmm so what might be the issue 
let me try to fuzz it let's restart the process Crashed to 2100 byte as expected. Let us find the offset. Copy the value of EIP. It is still in 1978. Let us try to find more bad characters. Let's send this. Oh, I should have run it first. This actually sent all the hex characters possible. Hmm, there's some issue. Hmm. Oh, sorry, I was sending it to wrong IP. It is one zero. Oh, this entire value is wrong. Ten dot ten dot one zero one dot fifty five. And the port is one three three seven. This is not run. This is overflow one. The address is one nine seven eight. EAP value I can send anything but I'm sending 4141 in this case yeah it has crashed let's check the ESP let me follow it in dump still it seems 0708 these are the bad characters These are there. Let's use Mona compare method to find all the bad characters. Mona compare should be there. Yeah, it is. And uh, let's check if the address is right of ESP. Uh, I think it is wrong. ESP zero one nine B. 019BFA30 zero zero one nine okay so these are the bad characters there Let me create shell code again. Uh, 
Oh, I see. I think the IP needs to be something different. Hmm. What IP should I provide? I think this is the this is something. Try hack me should provide that. What should be the IP? Your IP. I think my IP should be something in this. I'm sorry. I think now I figure out my mistake. My mistake is that. I have provided the IP of my Kali machine, but this is not running in local, so the IP needs to be the IP of my machine and my machine. I think needs to be accessible. Hmm. So Kali VPN IP needs to be provided. What is my Kali VPN IP. Let me check Kali machine for that. I am guessing this should be my IP. I guess we were not doing anything wrong. It's just that we were not passing the right IP. I'm still not sure what is the IP. I guess this is the one. I don't see any mention of any other IP anywhere. Does the VPN return any IP for me? Let me check. This is all that I have when I run Open VPN. Sorry, it should be this for sure is wrong. This 
this is what is written when I do open VPN. Let me see if this one has any value. This one also doesn't have any mention of any IP. So I'm thinking of using this one in the L host let's see if we took care of all the bad characters So what were the bad characters? Zero zero then zero seven then zero eight zero seven then zero eight. I guess this one also was a mistake. Two E two F. A0 then A1 A0 then A1 I guess I was not passing the bad characters in the right way backslash X is the convention for writing hex anyway let's try to generate the shell code it is generated Shell code is now generated. Let's rerun the server. So two mistake that we have been doing for now, which I hope is fixed. First is that I was not passing the right IP of this machine on which I want to get back this reverse shell. Now also I'm not sure if I passed the right IP because now the IP is the IP of the Windows machine. And second mistake for sure was that I was not passing the bad characters properly convention. So that was also one thing. I hope those are fixed now. Let me use go. So this is not the one. I guess this should be fine. And pass the shell code. We should prepend it it with a few knobs nine zero nine zero nine zero nine zero okay 
I think we are good to go. Let's see, it is executed. Hmm, maybe the IP was wrong. What did we do wrong this time? 101.55. Oh, it shows terminated. Let's rerun the server. It is running. Let's send the payload once again. Did it crash? I think uh, we are passing the IP wrong. I'm still not sure what is the IP to provide. Uh, so I guess I have figured out what is my IP. So this was a bit complicated. So there was a medium blog by Rahul Mandel that helped me understand. So your IP, the IP which you should use in LHOST is actually the one that you'll see in TUN0. This is your interface and this IP is your IP. So you'll have to use this one as your L host for creating MSF Venom. So you'll see on the left hand side, I use this IP in order to generate the shell code and then I prepended it with a few knob sled and I was able to run it. So you'll see that I use those. So that is the only change that I made. I use this IP for the L host for creating the MSF Venom. So I can also show you the MSF Venom command. You will see that this is the IP that I provided. Once I provided this IP, I got the, the shell code, which I pasted in ESP and prepended it with a few nine zeros to have the knob sled. And let me run this listener. If I run it, let me rerun the server, the server is running, you will see on the right hand side I got the shell back. If I do dir, you will see all these files available, so I am on the machine. So this was a great learning, this was the first of the episode for try at me and this is done. Thank you so much for watching.